Today we are going to build a super NAS with one of the most beautiful cases that I know. We are going to use five hard drives and a mini ITX board with an integrated CPU with top performance. The operating system will be your choice, but today we will be using the latest version of Zima OS so that in addition to being able to store all our data and access it from anywhere in the world, you will be also able to install services like Home Assistant, Jellyfin and many others. So if you want to build your your own NAS and select the components that you want depending on the performance and of the looks that you want this might be a great solution this case is the Jonesbow N1 it's not the newest and latest cases out there but it's one of the most beautiful cases for NAS projects and of course you can decide to use it like this on the vertical or even on the horizontal because it has this rubber surface right over here personally I prefer to use it like this vertically in my opinion just looks awesome and if we put it in a really nice corner it doesn't even look that it's a computer. The motherboard that we will use is the Minisphor BD790i X3D, a mini ITX form factor with an AMD Ryzen 9 7945 HX3D CPU already integrated on the board, which means that we only need to worry about RAM and the SSD for the operating system. The board is really cool and affordable considering its price and the performance of the CPU that already comes built in. The largest heatsink that you see here in the center is the CPU heatsink and we will also install a proper fan. Now it has USB type A, USB type C 3.2, HDMI, display port, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet and external antennas for Wi-Fi 6E. Just in case if you want to build a gaming machine instead of an Ash, then probably you want to take advantage of Wi-Fi 6E and that's great. For this particular project we will not be using the external antennas. Now I will be using a Sabrent Rocket 5 SSD and 64 gigabytes of Sabrent DDR5 RAM. The smaller heatsink that we see right over here we will remove with the fan and it will show us space for two NVMEs M.2. So in addition to the Rocket 5 I will also be installing a Rocket Q4. We simply open the plastic cover for each of the SSDs, insert the SSD and then push back that cover to secure it. That's it. Then just do the same for the second SSD and it's set. Now I can put the fan back with the heatsink, screw it in and there we go. Now I can install two RAM sticks. Just snap them in and there we go. 64 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. The fan I'll use for the CPU heatsink is the Noctua Redux 120 millimeters, which is super quiet but has a awesome performance. We just need to attach the two fan mounts that come with the motherboard and then mount the fan and screw it in with four screws. It looks amazing, it has a really low profile and it fits really well in this particular case. So if you are building a system for a really small footprint like this one right over here or even smaller, this set of motherboard with the fan it's really, really awesome. To install the board, I had to remove two screws to pass it through, but once it's in place, it looks great. We just need to install four screws to secure the board, and then we can remove the case cables and connect them to the board so that we keep things tidy. And despite being small, this case and motherboard combo is not difficult at all to work with. Actually, the experience was really, really cool. I will use the Corsair SF850 power supply, and to install it, just adjust it and screw in four screws. That's it. I will also use a PCIe card to connect the five hard drives because this motherboard does not have enough SATA ports. Simply remove the wide expansion card and then connect it to the motherboard, simple as this. I have some SATA cables as well, but in this particular case, I will want to use this six to one cable which is a kit more or less to keep things as tight as possible. It's not expensive and worth it for projects like this that we have five or six hard drives. So we just need to connect the five SATA connectors in this case behind the drives and the other five ends to the PCIe card connected to the motherboard. And we are almost done. Now I just need to connect the power supply cables to the motherboard, CPU, drives and peripherals that I'm using. And since the power supply is modular, I only need to use the cables that I actually need. So my things inside the case will be 
organized. We will be using five Toshiba N300 8TB drive each and this is the most tedious part of this project. Installing four screws with anti-vibration mounts on each drive. This was the part where I spent most of the time on this build. But believe me, it's worth it because each drive has protection and a rubber handle, making it easy to insert and remove drives from this Nash after finishing. And once we finish, it looks perfect. But I don't want to do this task again because putting those four screws with the rubber and then plus the rubber handle but it works great because if I want to remove a drive I just need to pull it and then insert it back when I need it will slide in with the supports that we have installed and now it looks like we are done the case looks really awesome even being open now we just need to close the case with this lid right over here we just need to put it on the top let it slide on and remove any cables that might be in the way which was my case and it's finished it looks really awesome and if we put this somewhere else that it's not a desk it even looks like something else that it's not a computer and it's not it's it's a super nash now the operating system we can select anything that we want true nash unraid proxmox or anything else today we are going to use zima os and its latest version so we just need to go to our friend google go to the official zima os page and download it then we will use any tool like balena etcher to create the usb installation so we just need to insert a usb stick and create the installation usb which will take about two minutes or so. Now remove the USB drive from the computer that you are using, insert it here in the NAS and press the delete once we press the turn on button. So we can choose the boot disk, which at this moment it will be the USB that we want to boot to install the operating system Zima OS, but we will also need to disable the secure boot, which will happen on most recent motherboards. You just need to search on the security tab and don't forget this step because it's important so that we can install the operating system. Then we just need to save and restart and it will boot into Zima OS installation menu. Now we have installed here several times so it's as simple as following the menus and once finished it will restart and when it restarts you will see a series of code lines on the screen and since this is a Philips Brilliance 5k that I'm using at this moment the text looks really really tiny which is an overkill because I don't even need a display. The only thing that I will require from the display is to check out the IP address that my machine has. But if I don't have a screen plugged in, I can just check that on my router and that's it. So the display is overkill, but it's not overkill to be on my setup right over there with the Mac Mini M4 Pro. Now, let's go to any of the computers that we have on our network let's put in the ip that we just copied from the screen or from our router and access the zim os setup page we just need to create an account and in a few minutes you're in the dashboard where you can manage your drives and now you want to organize them in addition to using it as a nas you can install services or applications and there are so many apps ready to install with just one click which is really cool here i did install home assistant and jellyfin in about two or three minutes both were up and running but there are so many other apps that we can install that our nash system doesn't have to be a 2002 system that we only used for storage and keeping our data safe and a way to have our personal cloud we can do so many things home assistant and jellyfin are just two but there are so many apps that we can take advantage for our smart home for our entertainment and a lot more tasks some of them which we have covered here on the channel so it's more than a storage solution it's more of a project that we will be using on our daily basis and that will allow us to do a lot of stuff including learning a lot and activating a lot of services that otherwise we couldn't do it at home hopefully you've enjoyed the video and the suggestions that we have right over here 
awesome hardware for a awesome project of course i will leave links down below for all the components that we have right over here but this is a project do it yourself so you can select any of the components that you find more appealing to your project if you do so don't forget to leave a comment down below if you are already using a system such as this if you are going to build one or if you prefer a nash that it's pre-built from any of the brands that we have reviewed right over here on any of the cases if the video was helpful don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated on this side of the screen my name is Roberto George and as always I'll see you on the next one